Hello, it's David here from Block Whisperers again. Today I've got something really cool to show you, and it is ice hockey in vanilla Minecraft using command blocks. I've gone to the trouble of making this big ice hockey stadium. I'm not the best builder in the world, so I do apologise if the builders of of the internet look at this and think it's a little bit lame. But we made a nice big stadium to host this. Um, ice hockey game. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a demonstration of how it's played, I'm going to get some friends of mine on here, um, we'll have a good game, you'll be able to see exactly how it plays, you'll notice that I've used a slime for a puck which is kind of cool, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of tell you how it works as well. Let's jump straight into it. Oh I think I'm about to lay about <laughs> I have no food. Oh, I have just like half left before I can't run. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess. Oh. What do you say? A button. Don't press anything, Skybrook. You're oh, just. Look. A button. Oh, stand on the blue. Oh, we keep pushing each other out of the way, I think. Uh, please stand on the blue on only you before pressing a button. Uh, leave the blue team. Join the blue team. Oh. Uh, I already joined you in. Oh, so we're both in there? Alright. So you both on red? Oh, good. Oh. Do I thought you... there's a little TVP, so I'll start punching. Alright. Okay. Medium hit. Big whack. Oh, yep, and now I have hunger. Ah, you hitting me? I'll use a little slime. I can't see the slime. Ow. Skyrigger, stop hitting him! No! And I'll just hold it still. Oh, Jesus! Oh, something incredible, I think! Um. Ah! Ah! Ooh, command blocks. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Where'd the slime go? Here. Oh. Yeah, get away. Ah. What, what's the, what the shield even for? I am over here now. What's the shield even for? Oh, well, that would make sense. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. <laughs> I, uh. Wait! I I just Shield. stay here and block the slime. <laughs> both you both come in now. I can't. I'm not get in. Then all of them are blocked I can't away. The <laughs> oh god, what is it? It bounced off of me. That's off of me. Oh, it's over here now. No! Ah. I took my shield off. I don't think I meant to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love. Oh my own group. Oh, so close. Ah. <laughs> I'm my own group now. Uh. Oh come on, Scar. <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> you get yes. Mister what? Get your I'm naked! Back. I'm naked! <laughs> ah. Oh! Hey. <laughs> How did we score? <laughs> oh, I don't have a hockey puck! I'll just keep ah. it in. Oh no, I missed! I'm naked! I'm naked! I don't have a puck anymore! I don't have a puck anymore. Oh, darn it. Got knocked to the side. Skybreaker, what are you trying to do? <laughs> He's into my puck. I don't have a puck anymore. Oh. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yes, I look in here. I don't have a puck anymore. It's all gone. I like this. <laughs> oh, and I got another team. I'm just doing nothing. Uh, oh, 
Did oh. someone give me like a knockback stick? Oh no! Ah! Uh, uh. Oh, somebody can can give me can give me like one of your sticks. Why don't you have one? <laughs> I do it all by. Oh, oh, you can cheat by jumping over the puck before it spawns. I did it all by the way. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, punch. <laughs> Get away. Where'd it go? Oh no 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 no! Get that way. Go that way. Oh yeah! So we're gonna be aiming one of the pucks. I almost missed you're with that. We're gonna be one of your pucks. I know. Oh boy. Ah. Oh, and I missed to the side. And there we go. I like this. But well, then again, I'm half cheating by jumping over the puck before it spawns. <laughs> but. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, and I think oh, I'm not. <laughs> I almost had it. Oh, and. We get and. Oh, Jesus. I already love this. Oh boy. Oh, and there we go. Oh, McGill's always doing everything. I'm here. That Skywalker's just kind of sitting over there without even a puck or whatever. I <laughs> know, I puck it armor away. And. Oh! Shall we have a look how this works? Okay, wow, you might notice that there's some words and stuff hanging around. There's an armor stand there called Entrance, just so you know. And I've not done the snack bar yet, I'll do that later. But what you'll notice is all around the rink is barrier blocks. I don't want anybody going in the rink who's not in game. People can spectate. So they can sit in the stands, do whatever they want to do, that's cool. But while the game's on, the only people in there are going to be the people playing the game. So let's go down to the changing rooms and see what happens. Okay, so we'll go in the red team. So the idea is you put your stuff in the chest here because this uses a lot of clear inventory. So you don't want to lose your stuff. So you put your stuff in the ender chest there. It's just an easy way of keeping your gear while you play the game. So stand on the red wall and press the buttons. So you want to join the red team, press that one. You want to leave the red team, you press that one. We'll join it again. The other thing to do is declare when the red team are ready to play. So that will only happen if there's at least one person on the team. If a, you, you can't de obviously declare a team ready if it's got no players in it. Okay. And you'll notice that when I leave the team and I've declared ready, it will then say you're no longer ready. So if there's a blue team member who's ready and, a, and at least one red team is ready, the game will start. Just so you know. Oh, bats. Go away. Behind here is all sorts of commands. Let me light this place up a bit. It's so dark behind here. Maybe that's why the bats like it. Okay, so behind each button is a chain of command blocks. So of course this is using snapshots. I don't use 1.8 anymore. It's kind of gonna be a thing of the past soon anyway. So let's just have a look at this and see how it works. So the join button. This thing we wanna do is there's an armor stand called red. So we wanna to execute to that armor stand uh, that's got a score team size maximum of four. So I'm using a scoreboard um, objective called team size to monitor the size of the team. And we only, we only have a maximum of five players per team, otherwise the game would get a little bit messy. So if it's if it's four, it will it's fine or or under. Then it will execute to the nearest player with no team because you're joining the team, so it will only let people join you on in a team within a radius of one of that armor stand. Just so you know, that armor stand called red is 
on that red spot. So it's going to then scoreboard teams join red at P. So the nearest player, which is going to be the player stun on that spot, is going to join to team red. This next one is conditional. So if that, that command is successful, it will then run this command. So it will add one to the red armor stands team size score. Obviously, if that team size score is then becomes five, it won't let anyone else join the team because the next person will not activate this command. Another conditional block, and this is a, just a tell raw, so it's going to execute to the armor stand, the red armor stand. Um, and then it's going to do the tell raw command to all players within a radius of one, i.e., the players stood on that red block, and it's going to say, Ice hockey, you have joined the red team. Okay, I won't go into that because tell roll commands, you can look up how to do those. Next one is another tell roll, and this isn't conditional, so this will run every time. So if the team size is a minimum of five, i.e. the team is full, so the red armor stand team, team size score of five or more, it's going to do the towel raw ice hockey whatever I put there sorry the team is full or whatever it is team is full try the other team or wait till the next game of course and then lastly on this one this is for so it's going to go to the red armor stand again another towel raw so this is for players who are already in the blue team and then try and join the red team we have to weed out every possible scenario here just to stop, you know, people pressing the wrong things and messing the game up. So all players in the blue team, and it's going to say, you are already in the team, you're in the other team, please leave that team first. And job done. Okay, leave the red team, let's have a look at that. So the leave chain. There we go, so execute at the armor, the red armor stand, and then it's going to execute to the nearest player within a radius of one in team red. So it will only let people leave the red team who are already in the red team. Scoreboard, players remove. It's going to remove one from the red armor stand's team size score. Next one is to the red armor stand again. Okay, we're going to tell Raw to all players within a radius of one in team red. It's going to say, you have left the red team. That's conditional as well, by the way. So only if that one happens, will this one happen? And only if this one happens, will this one happen? Which is to the red armor stand and it's going to clear inventory for all players in the red team. So we've already joined the... Um, yeah. So it's going to clear inventory of all players in the red team. Then next one, same to the red, execute to the red armor stand, and then execute to the nearest player within a radius of one in the red team. Scoreboard teams, and you're going to leave the red team. So now you're no longer in the team. The team size score has been reduced by one to allow for somebody else to join if the team's already full. So we can track the size of the team. And this one is going to execute to the red armor stand with a team size score minimum of zero and a team size. So that's a team size score of zero. Um, and of got a ready objective here as well which is monitoring whether the play the teams are ready or not so a ready score minimum of one so this is when a team's already been declared ready and somebody's left that team and it's now zero which means the team can no longer be ready because there's no players in it so that's going to tell raw to say the red team is no longer ready and then this one Again, execute to the red armor stand, team size score of zero, 
and it's going to do scoreboard player set red armor standard ready score of zero so what it's going to do it's going to make sure so it's saying you're no longer ready because the last person's left the red team and also going to remove that ready score so that the scoreboard actually makes sure that the game can't start because the game can only start when both teams have got a ready score of one okay and then the last button is the declare ready button so we've got to the red armor stand ready score of zero then it's going to execute to the nearest player um, that are in team red in radius of one of that armor stand which is on that red wall spot outside and then do scoreboard players set um, to the red armor stand ready score of one so that's going to make the ready the ready score of that red armor stand of one so the red armor stand if that's one and the blue if that's one for the other team then the game will start that's the cue for the game to start and then this is a conditional block so if that command was successful it's then going to say uh, go back to the start so it's another execute to the red armor stand tell raw to all players And it's going to say the red team are ready to play. And that is it. So I've got exactly the same. If I just smash through here to the other changing room, it is exactly the same on this side. Okay. So that's the kind of te the way the teams are joined and removed and, and the way the game is queued to start. Okay, so I'm going to go to the staff area, which is underneath the ice hockey rink, where you can see all the command blocks. The game is actually, in terms of the way I've set up the command blocks, there's a start game routine, there's an end game routine, there's a few other bits and bobs going off, which I'll explain, and then there's every time a goal is scored routine, or the start play routine, I think I've called it. And then underneath the goals is a chain of each goal's got a chain of command blocks. So it got it got quite complicated, but I'll I'll, I'll attempt to explain it as best as I can. So the first thing I had to do is make a timer. So you can't see it, but there's an armor stand here called timer. I've made it invisible. I probably shouldn't have done that actually. There was no need, but I've made that invisible and I've used that to to make a second timer which you've seen on the, on the game demo. So the way that works is, is that the the ticks or I've made like a normal clock which then converts to seconds. So this is the timer here actually. So if I go on here there's a tick score so I've got quite a few scoreboard objectives here. One's called tick and scoreboard players add to the armor standard name of timer tick one. So that's just smashing away like a normal redstone clock a fill clock um, on the tick score but the difference is is that when the tick score the armor stand tick score gets to 20 which is one second it resets the tick score back to zero so this is smashing up to 20 and then goes to zero again and then this conditional block which if this resets back to zero, can, this will activate this block, which is obviously every second. So every second this block is being activated. And I'm not adding to a clock here, I'm removing because I'm starting with a five minute clock and removing one second at a time. So scoreboard, players remove, armor stand, name of timer with a with a miscellaneous score or a misc score of one and removing one so every second one gets removed from the misc score of that timer armor stand so if i just scoreboard objective set display sidebar misc okay you can't see it but the bottom one the minus one is the timer so if i if i set that to 20 scoreboard players set so if I do the armor stand name of timer misc score of 20 
you'll see that that goes to 20 and you see it counts down one every second so that is the game timer and then what happens at the end of the game it works out who wins based on who's got the highest score Okay, and that's it. And then you'll see at the bottom I got a message there saying blue team wins the game, but that's invalid because no games actually happen, but I just did that to demonstrate to you what happens. Okay, so the other thing is we don't want people smashing up the arena, so I'd put these two blocks here to sort of protect things. So when anyone comes near this arena, they go into adventure mode, and that's obviously game mode, adventure, all players within a radius of 80 blocks that are in survival mode and then when they get outside of the arena area I'm putting them back into survival so game mode survival radius outside of 81 in adventure mode so as soon as they walk away from here they will go back to survival as soon as they come near again they'll be back in adventure mode and they can't smash the place up which is nice okay so that's the timer um, the next thing, I'll cover that in a minute. So one thing is XP orbs really ruin the system. So I've, I've put something here to kill all XP orbs that, that happen inside the arena. Um, the slime, I'm going to st stop that jumping as well because slimes jump all the time. You can't really play ice hockey with a jumping slime. So I used an entity data command there. So the slime's got a name of Puck. So all, all entities with a name of Puck, and I'm resetting their fall distance to zero and their on ground to zero. So what that does is it means that it thinks it's not fallen at all, which means it won't receive any fall damage even if it does fall. And the on ground is the most important bit because if it's set to zero, the slime thinks it's in the air and it doesn't jump because it thinks it's already in the air, so there's no point jumping. And that was how I got around the, the thing jumping up and down all the time. So that worked quite well. The other thing that we apply to it is slowness to stop it moving. And that's it. You've got a puck then that you can smash around the place really good. Um, the other thing is we when the match is in place, we don't want people going in the changing rooms and joining teams and stuff. So anyone that's not in a team... We TP them out of the changing area. So I'm executing to the armor stand. Name of timer with a miscellaneous score minimum of of one. So if there's any time on the clock on the game clock, then that executes to the other armor stand with a name of blue, which is the one in the changing room, which is the one I'm using to sort of TP people out with. So after that. TP in all players within a radius of a to the armor stand called entrance, which is the one at the entrance. So if there's any time on the game clock, they will then get TP to the entrance if somebody tries to go in there and join a team or anything. So that just stops any kind of problems. Okay, you may have noticed the fancy scoreboard on the um, in the game demo. So if I just display that. Of course, so I've got a scoreboard objective of ice hockey, but to display the, the scores and the seconds remaining, I've used fake players based on the scores of the armor stands. So I've got the timer armor stand, and I've got the red armor stand and the blue armor stand. So the way I transfer that over to this ice hockey display is I'm doing scoreboard players operation seconds remaining which is the name of my fake player for the clock and so seconds remaining for the ice hockey objective i'm making that equal the armor stand called timers miscellaneous score so that time remaining will then go on to seconds remaining in the ice hockey objective which is the one on on the right hand side there which is minus one at the moment when we're not in game it's always minus one and I've got the same for the red and the blue scores, so I'll only just show one of these. We've got scoreboard players operation. So red score, which is the fake player for the ice hockey objective. 
needs has to equal the armor st the red armor stand miscellaneous score and that and I've done exactly the same for the blue and that gives you your two scores as well so when someone scores a goal transfers from the the armor stand score to that fake player on the scoreboard on the right hand side okay bear with me this is quite a quite a long process I know but hopefully you're learning something so the end game routine is this one here or this chain along here so I'm quite proud of this one so the first thing that we do is that when the timer gets to zero we make it minus one so the timer will count down to zero and it won't count down any further so to sort of prompt the end game response I set the timer to minus one when it gets to zero so scoreboard play is set armor stand name of timer the score miscellaneous which is the time of zero and then set the mis miscellaneous score to one easy peasy so we, now it's at minus one we know the game's ended so the next thing we do is we have just a set block a redstone block here which is going to set a redstone block in this place this one at the bottom sets that back to air so it doesn't hang around and that fires this big long chain of commands here so I've wrote on the signs what each one does so this is the important bit so we're going to subtract one score from the other to discover who the winner was because if you take away the red from the blue score for example and if it's a minus number you know one team's won if it's a plus number you know the other team's won so that's how we know who the winner is at the end of the game so scoreboard players operation the blue armor stand miscellaneous score that will subtract I can't remember which way it does from which but it subtracts one from the other and subtracts the red the red miscellaneous score so I've now subtracted one score from the other next thing we do is clear the inventory of the blue team we clear the inventory of the red team we stop displaying the sidebar because we've just taken one number from the other and it would look strange so we do that scoreboard objective set display sidebar so we're not displaying this ice hockey on the right anymore then we announce the blue team if they win so what you can see there is execute at entity with um, name of blue which is the blue armor stand and the score miscellaneous minimum of one so that's if it's a positive number and then it's going to announce that the blue team has won and then the next one is announce if the red team wins so it's going to go to the blue armor stand with a miscellaneous score of minus one so if that's a minus number after that subtraction we know the red team's won so it's going to announce that and then finally if that scores a zero it means it's a tie or a draw so if the blue armor stand score is zero then we're going to tell the world that the game was a tie next thing we do is we give a diamond to the winning team so there's two one for the blue team and one for the red team so again based on exactly the same scoring logic so if the blue armor stand is a minus number we're going to give the red team a diamond each and the same for the blue if it's a plus number we're going to give the other team a diamond the blue team so next thing we need to do is TP everyone out of the arena so TP the red team outside and the blue so that means TP in all players in the red team to the entrance armor stand this is going to be exactly the same but for the blue easy peasy we're going to reset the team size to zero so that another game can start with no problems and we've got two of those one for the red team one for the red armor stand and one for the blue armor stand like so we're going to reset the scores to zero so this one's going to reset the red armor stand miscellaneous score to zero which is the number of goals this is going to do it exactly the same for the blue next thing we need to do is empty the blue team and then empty the red team 
which is scoreboard teams leave all players in team red from the red. Let's have a look at how the start game routine works. So the first thing we need to do is announce that the game is ready when both the red armour stand and the blue armour stand have got a ready score of 1. So both teams have pressed the ready button. And that is going to execute to the red armour stand minim minimum ready score of 1, which will then execute to the blue armour stand minimum ready score of 1. So only when both of those are 1 will it execute the tell raw command to tell everybody that the game is starting. Then what we need to do is set the ready score back to zero for both teams. So scoreboard, player set, red armor stand, with a ready score of one, set back ready score back to zero. And this exactly the same for the other team, for the blue team, for the blue armor stand. And then we're going to set a redstone block in this position here, which will then move on to the next stage. So when all that's happened, we're going to set the scores to zero. So the red armor stand miscellaneous score, which is the number of red goals, we're going to be set to zero. And then we're going to set the blue to zero, which is exactly the same. So it's going to be zero each to start with. Then we're going to reset the team size back to zero so that a game can start at any given time before, you know, after the game. So players set blue, blue armor stand, team size zero. We've got exactly the same, but with the red armor stand. Then we're going to clear inventory for both teams. So clear all item, um, all players in team red. We're going to clear all for team blue. So both, so the score's been set to zero. Team size has been set back to zero. We've cleared the inventory of both teams. And then we're going to set the display to show the ice hockey in the sidebar, which is that what you can see now. Then we move, let's have a look, which way does it go? Oh, sorry, no, we don't do that one. If you look at the order of this, it goes up first. It was a bit confusing, I'm sorry. So not that one, but this one. So then it's going to start to give you your items. So the red team, you're going to get a wooden hoe because that looks a little bit like a hockey stick. Um, it's going to have, it's going to be unbreakable. It's going to be called medium hit and it's going to have not back two on it, which is ID 19 enchantment. So give a medium hoe. I'm going to give a medium hoe to the other team as well. Team blue, exactly the same. And then we're going to give a short hoe, which is just an unenchanted um, wooden hoe, which is just no knockback at all. Exactly the same. The short one is called small tap. And then we're going to give a big hoe, which sounds a bit wrong, I know, but bear with me. Blue team, wooden hoe. It's unbreakable, it's called big whack, and it's got level 3 knockback. Exactly the same for the other team. Then we're going to give a shield to each team. Now to generate the shields, the colour on the front, the banner, I used the um, MC Stacker's brilliant um, tool on the internet. And just search MC Stacker, you'll find it straight away. It's amazing. So I use, what I did for the shield, I actually used the replace item entity because it, it's going to put the shield in the person's offhand. So it doesn't place it in their in, in their sort of normal inventory. It places it straight in the offhand, so they haven't actually got to do that. So the, all players in the red team slot dot weapon dot offhand, which is placing it in the offhand, and then Minecraft shield with the display name of blocker, um, and it's got a pattern on it which I generated using a tool that was linked from MC Stacker's um, tool as well. So that's going to give the red team a shield that's got a red front on it. And exactly the same for the blue team. And then to give the jersey or the shirt or whatever you want to call it, the hockey shirt, I've done exactly the same. Replace item entity, so all players in team blue. The slot, dot armor, dot chest. So it's going to place um, 
a leather chest plate directly onto their chest armor slot. And it's going to have knockback resistance on it, which is this command here. So it's got 0 0.6 knockback resistance. And what that means is, is that if you get hit 10 times, out of the 10 times on average, six times it will resist knockback, which gives a kind of full element to the game. Because if you're hitting the other player, sometimes the player will knock back and sometimes they won't. And also there's a custom color on there as well. So the red team gets a red shirt and the blue team gets a blue shirt. Now if anybody, these commands are quite long and I've not gone into them in any detail. If anybody wants to know how to do any of these commands, please just send, leave a comment and I'll, I'll, I'll leave a comment and I'll tell you how to do it. Okay, and then finally, so yeah, it does go that way. We're here now and we're going down to the bottom. So we're going to set block to start the play routine. So set block relative to this block, a redstone block, which is here. It's going to set a block here and I'll go on to this in a moment. Then what it's going to do is going to start the timer. So it's going to do scoreboard players set the entity name timer, which is the armor stand. It's going to set the miscellaneous score to 305 seconds. So the time is going to start 305, which by the time all the intros happen, it's going to be around 300, which is five minutes. So the games are five minutes long. And then finally, we're going to set display to show the ice hockey on the sidebar, which is what you can see there. And then, so this is where we are now. So the, all that's been set up to start the game. Um, next thing we do is <clears throat> we're on here now. So we're going to kill any pucks that are lying around. So any slimes called puck or any entity called puck we're actually going to kill. Just in case something went wrong with the game and there's like three or four hanging around or anything like that. And then we're going to TP both teams into the arena. So we're going to TP all players in Team Red to a random entity, which is an armor stand, and it's named Red Spawn. So I'll show you on the arena, but there's actually um, different spawn points that you can randomly spawn at every time you get TP'd in. I've done exactly the same for the blue team, except they get um, randomly teleported to an armor stand called Blue Spawn. Let me show you that just quickly. So if I just break here and go into the stadium. Okay. Okay, so I just broke into the stadium and I could, I've just made the names of these arm, armor stands visible so you can see. But they're called Blue Spawn and there's five, so you can randomly spawn in any. Every time there's a goal or the game starts, you will randomly spawn in one of these places. And it's exactly the same for the Red Spawn armor stands on the other side. Okay, back to it. So the next thing is we TP both teams in, then we're going to give the players slowness to stop the movement for 5 seconds while the countdown starts. So that's just an effect command for all players in team blue. Um, effect 2 which is slowness for 6 seconds and the um, level of the effect is 7 which means the player can't move at all. And exactly the same there for the red team. So that's happened. You will notice a chain of repeaters now, so that happens first, then we go down these repeaters to here. This is a title which gives the countdown, so this is just saying all players within a 40 block radius are going to see the number 3. You can see, well, the text 3 on the screen. I'm going to play the sound, so all players within a 40 block radius execute. I'm going to play sound, Minecraft block.note.base. It's a block sound and it's going to play to the nearest player. So everybody's going to hear that. Then in case there's, because we just killed the slime here, 
if there's any slimes lying around that we don't want. If you kill them, you, you will see the slime hanging around afterwards, the drop. So we want to kill any item entities within a 40 block radius just in case. Just, I don't know why, being a bit picky really. You haven't really got to do that, but just trying to be a perfectionist. So then you move, it moves along to here. This takes about one or two seconds to count down. Then the next one, it's going to say two. It's going to play the same sound again. Then we move over to here. It's going to say one. Play the same sound again. And then we get to the, the sort of important bit is where the, the game is starting or, you know, from a goal being scored, the game restarts. So it's going to say go. Title command again. It's going to play a sound, slightly different sound this time, the harp sound. Uh, nothing on that one. I must have used that for something else while I was testing. So that's effect 10. So it's going to give regeneration for 300 seconds, which is the five minutes, um, at a level two. And it's going to true, it's going to hide the particles. So we want a regeneration just so that when we're all hitting each other, we're not dying everywhere. This one here, we're going to give saturation as well. Um, so that's number 23 for 300 seconds and level 20. Again, just so you're not getting hungry while you're playing. We're going to give speed um, level 2 for 300 seconds as well. So it feels like you're ice skating if you've got the, the speed on there. Okay, this is an important command. So this is where we're summoning the slime or the puck. So relative to here, which is the center spot on the arena. So summon the slime, custom name of puck. Name not visible. We want it to be persistent. We want it size zero, which is the smallest. And then we're going to give it some attributes, generic max health. And we're going to give it lots of health. Again, if anyone wants to know that command in detail, then leave a comment. Uh, we're going to give slowness to the puck. <clears throat> so we've, we've just spawned in the puck. Now we're going to give it slowness to make sure that it doesn't jump or well, make sure that it doesn't move, actually. That's that one. And that is, that is it, actually. Don't need those two. So that is the whole start game chain. So the only bit I haven't covered is what happens when somebody scores a goal. So if I go and show you the goal, you will see that there's a load of pressure plates down there. You just skate on back down here. So when that pressure plate's activated, that's in here. You can see it activates that redstone, which then goes to this command block chain. So we're going to kill the puck when it's in the goal. We're going to add to the score. So scoreboard players add red armor stand because this is the goal that will give the red team a score. We're going to add one to the miscellaneous score. We're going to use a tell raw to announce the goal. So tell raw all players within 100 blocks. The red team has just scored, etc, etc. And then the next thing we're going to do is start the play routine again, which is here. So we're going to spawn a redstone block in this position here. And you'll see that set block and relative coordinates to this point, we're going to spawn a redstone block. And that will then start this whole chain again. Playing the sounds, counting down, spawning the puck in, etc, etc. This goal over here is exactly the same, except it's adding to the different score. And that is it. That's how this works. I know this has been a long video. It's been quite long actually making this, so <laughs> if you think the video's long, you imagine making it. Um, or, so please just leave a comment, subscribe, like what you see, um, please tell your friends about it, you know, make something similar yourselves, play it, let me know how you get on. If there's anything else you want us to make that you think would be cool, then just leave a comment. We want to make loads of cool stuff, so... Just let us know and um, we'll give it a go. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.